deadly Hurricane Dorian on the move. The outer bands now striking the coast of Florida with wind gusts topping 60 miles an hour, carving a path toward the Carolinas. Hospitals evacuating, families racing to escape as the death toll rises in the Bahamas. The magnitude of the devastation now coming into focus. Neighborhoods totally destroyed. Thousands now left homeless. And the new footage from our team right at the center of the storm. Take your time. As the island nation faces a humanitarian crisis, our team on the ground with a search for survivors. Tragedy at sea. New Coast Guard footage shows smoke pouring from that boat with 34 people trapped on board. And now a first look inside the escape hatch, the tight sleeping quarters, as the brother of one of the victims speaks out only on GMA. Walmart's big move on guns, the crackdown, the weapons and ammunition they now say they won't sell after recent horrific shootings. New twists in the college admission scandal. A parent's legal filing reveals new emails from USC officials. What it could mean for Lori Laughlin and the parents now facing charges. And stunning upset overnight. Tennis great Roger Federer knocked out of the US Open by an unseated player as Serena Williams sails on to the semis in just 44 minutes. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. And good morning, America. We want to get right to Hurricane Dorian this Wednesday morning. It's making its way up the East Coast. That's a live look at Melbourne, Florida right now, where winds gusted near 60 miles an hour overnight. And let's take a look at the satellite right now. Dorian moving north. The National Hurricane Center warning about a life-threatening storm surge. And this morning, there is utter devastation in the Bahamas, where Hurricane Dorian made landfall three times mm. as a Category 5 storm. Three times. So here's what we know right now. Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Virginia all are under states of emergency. The storm is now a Category 2 hurricane, with winds hitting 105 miles per hour. We have team coverage of this expanding and still powerful storm. Ginger starts us off with the very latest from Jupiter, Florida. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning, Robin. Just to our north, Smyrna Beach clocked a 69 mile per hour gust overnight, and we have gusts happening right now with that storm that is parked off the coast of Florida. These tropical storm force winds reach 175 miles outside of the center, so even Orlando got into some of those outer bands. But look what we're most concerned about. It's Charleston. It's Wilmington. It's the Outer Banks Thursday into Friday. That's the timing for you. It will get way too close for comfort. Let me time it all out. I'm going to start with the possibilities of gusts in Savannah at 92 by tomorrow morning. Charleston will be up to 42. Look how close the eye rides along the Carolina coast. This is through Thursday 11 p.m. Wilmington starts to see some of those gusts to 50 and then it rides right along and could even make a landfall in the Outer Banks as we head into Friday morning. So we're watching this as it hugs along the coast. Of course there are storm surge warnings. They have upped the numbers for Myrtle Beach five to eight feet right along that South Carolina coast four to seven feet for Charleston. I, of course, will not be staying here. We have regained a bunch of beach here, about 50 yards, because we've got offshore winds. And you see the edge of those clouds? That's the edge of the core of Dorian. So I'm going to head up to South Carolina today and cover the rest. But for now, we'll head back to you, Michael. All right, travel safe, Ginger. Thank you so much for that. And Dorian is finally moving away from the Bahamas, but is leaving so much destruction behind. And this morning, the death toll is climbing as crews search for survivors. Marcus Moore was right in the center of the storm as it hit Marsh Harbor. He's now made his way to Nassau. Good morning, Marcus. Michael, good morning. There are areas that first responders still have not been able to reach in their search for survivors. And this morning, we are getting our most revealing look yet at the destruction they're up against. After riding out the 180 mile per hour winds and massive rains in a hotel room and then a utility closet. This is absolutely a mind blowing event that is unfolding right now. Then climbing into a chopper, we get our first glimpse of the decimated Bahama Islands from the air. Miles of widespread destruction, homes and businesses destroyed. The full force of Mother Nature's fury as far as the eye can see. Authorities calling the destruction unprecedented. Parts of Abaco are decimated. Thousands now homeless. People picking through the rubble to salvage what they can while others recall harrowing tales of survival. Howard Armstrong survived a 21-foot storm surge over his home 
but his wife did not. My poor little wife got hyperfermia. I kept with her and, and she just drowned on me. We watched as one man swept from his home, grabbed our crew van for safety just before he could be swept out to sea. Swim, swim, and remember swim. these people we witnessed surrounded by a fast moving storm surge, our producer urging them to swim for their lives. Swim. Swim. Then helping them out of the water. Take your time. ABC affiliate WPLG caught up with them. Okay, uh, how are you guys feeling right now? Um, terrified. Terrified. But we're happy to be safe. As we made our way to this clinic yesterday, the situation dire. The clinic has become a makeshift shelter, overrun by storm survivors. This is the clinic where uh, a lot of the, the injured have uh, been treated, but also there's a lot of family members and just people here just occupying the hallways. Every hallway is full. The before and afters, astonishing. This is what the Freeport Airport normally looks like. Dorian transformed it into an ocean. This once luxurious resort, now unrecognizable. And with communication still very difficult, we're hearing from more and more people who are urgently seeking news about loved ones. This couple from Canada who were vacationing in Treasure Key on Abaco Island, still missing. Their daughter Sarah last spoke to her parents on Sunday, just after Dorian made the first of two landfalls. I try not to think about them in terms of what they might be feeling, just because I hope that they're not scared. But this is a developing situation, a, a certainly a dire one, but much needed food and water is slowly making its way onto the island. But as we saw firsthand, Michael, uh, the people there have a very long road to recovery ahead. Yeah, we can see that, Mark. There's so much devastation there. And looking at those images, uh, everything just seems to be um, destroyed. How difficult was it for you to get from, from Marsh Harbor to Nassau with all of this? Uh, it was incredibly uh, difficult, uh, Michael, to even get around the island because there was debris covering all of the roadways there. So that, that made getting around uh, very hard. And we actually had to take a helicopter. It was the only uh, sure way to get out because the airport, it is underwater. And also using a boat at certain times was too dangerous because there were at least 20 foot waves out in the water. So it, it was uh, extremely hard. All right, Marcus, continue to be safe. Thank you so much, George. Okay, the outer bands of Dorian now hitting the southeast, and as Ginger pointed out, the biggest concern now, storm surges. Rob Marciano tracking that from Melbourne, Florida. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, George, and we're getting hit it with the backside of this thing in the way of wind, waves, and rain, of course. We're on the bay side, and you can see the waves and the storm surge affecting this. So much of this storm has been compared to Hurricane Matthew. Well, this is a road that was badly damaged during that storm, and they're still working on it. K-rail's up there, reinforcements up. It is still open, but so much of this state is surrounded by water, and that made for a long night when you had a hurricane of this magnitude raking the coast. Hurricane Dorian packing a punch as it churns up the eastern seaboard. Just 80 miles off the coast of Cape Canaveral, the Category 2 hurricane slamming the shoreline with dangerous wind gusts, heavy rain, and an intense storm surge. If you live in a residence that flooded over the last four years, you should evacuate your residence and move to higher ground. Millions of Americans under mandatory evacuation orders as flood-prone areas potentially face several feet of storm surge. Overnight, our Gio Benitez feeling the fury of Dorian's massive wind field. We are really feeling these winds and that rain right now. That wind is howling. It is slamming against windows because now this is the closest this eye has been to this part of Florida. The hurricane's rough surf already eroding the beach in Cape Canaveral. The storm surge carving feet out of the dunes. Over 800 flights canceled, several airports completely shut down. Over 100 mile per hour wind gusts, knocking down trees and power lines, leaving more than 11,000 customers in the dark overnight. And in Jacksonville, Florida, the National Guard ready to deploy. We are ready to bring in logistical support, communication support, high water rescue support. But many Floridians confident in riding it out. This is what happens in Florida, and you stay, you protect your property, you help out your neighbors if they need help. Honestly, we only lost power for about an hour last night. Less than 1% of the folks in this county are without power, but that wind field is expanding, and now we've got to worry about folks that live on the unprotected bay side of this storm as we get continue to get this pounding of wave 
and uh, and water surge. So this is far from over, Robin. Yeah, we can see that as we see the conditions, Rob. Thank you. As we've been telling you, Dorian is moving north, heading toward the Carolinas, and residents there are racing to prepare. Charleston's airport is set to close this afternoon, and a mandatory evacuation of all of North Carolina's barrier islands is going into effect. Steve Osinsami is in Charleston, has the latest for us from there. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, Robin. Authorities are warning residents here who are staying, and there are many of them, to keep off the roads, really starting this afternoon. Their concern is something that happened last year. They had to rescue 40 people from flooded vehicles, and they're not trying to do that again. But to give you a sense of what Charleston is facing, I want you to take a look exactly where I'm standing right now. And now take a look at these pictures. This was Irma two years ago. It was a tropical storm, and the storm surge was pouring over the seawall. Charleston can flood in a regular rain, so they are certainly expecting flooding with a hurricane nearby. In the past four years, many families here have been flooded four times. Here in Charleston, there are hospital CEOs who are now moving patients, very concerned about their patients, trying to get them to higher ground, moving them as far as Columbia and Greenville. One hospital CEO told us that he's trying to get all of his patients moved by this morning before the first tropical storm force winds arrive. Robin. All right, Steve, everybody take care there. Yeah, and Robin, we're going to turn now to Walmart's big move against guns. America's largest employer has announced they will stop selling ammunition used in assault-type rifles after the August mass shootings, including one in El Paso, Walmart, that left 22 people dead. Rebecca Jarvis here with the story. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, George. Yeah, and this is a very significant move by Walmart, not just the largest private employer in the country, but also the largest retailer with 4,000 storefronts. Now CEO Doug McMillan taking a stand on gun violence in America. This morning, the head of the nation's largest retailer addressing gun violence head on. Walmart CEO Doug McMillan writing in a letter to employees, it's clear to us that the status quo is unacceptable, promising the company will discontinue sales of short barrel rifle ammunition, discontinue sales of handgun ammunition, and discontinue handgun sales in Alaska, the last state where Walmart currently sells them. The move comes amid a surge in mass shootings in America including this weekend when seven people were killed by a shooter in Texas. This summer, Walmart itself has been at the center of several gun-related incidents. One month ago, 22 people killed by a gunman in a hate-filled attack at an El Paso Walmart. A few days prior, two Walmart workers were killed in this store in Mississippi, with a fellow employee charged in the shooting. And in August, an armed 20-year-old was charged for making terrorist threats after he entered the store carrying a rifle and 100 rounds of ammunition. Many anti-gun activists applauding the move, but the NRA called it shameful to see Walmart succumb to the pressure of anti-gun elites. The Walmart CEO himself, a gun owner, encouraging the president and Congress to take action. Legislation to close loopholes on all gun sales was passed by the House in February, but has been stalled in the Senate. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying Tuesday he's waiting on the president. If the president... Uh, took a position on, on uh, a bill that, so that we knew we would actually be making a law and not just having uh, serial uh, votes, I'd be happy to put it on the floor. Walmart currently sells 2% of firearms in the U.S. and one in every five bullets. And it isn't the first retailer to curb gun sales. In March of last year, after the Parkland, Florida school shooting, Dick's Sporting Goods stopped selling assault-style weapons in 125 of its 730 stores. Their CEO talking about the decision with GMA last year. We felt we really needed to do something, and uh, so we've uh, decided not to sell these assault weapons any longer in any of our stores. Still, most guns sold here in the U.S. are sold through private independent dealers and at gun shows. Walmart is also offering to help the smaller retailers, offering to give away for free its software, which runs compliance checks. George. Meantime, other big retailers are feeling this pressure. Yeah, that's right. Major grocery chain Kroger asked its customers yesterday to stop openly carrying guns. They're also calling on lawmakers to strengthen background checks. And you see more and more pressure, George, coming not only 
only from shareholders and outsiders, but also employees calling on their companies to do more. They don't feel safe at work. Yeah. Playing more of a public role. Okay, Rebecca, thanks very much, Michael. All right, we're going to go overseas now, George, to the political turmoil in the UK, where new Prime Minister Boris Johnson is facing a major defeat in the battle over Brexit. For foreign correspondent James Longman is in London with the very latest. Good morning, James. Yeah, good morning, Michael. America's closest ally in absolute turmoil this morning. Boris Johnson actually on his feet as we speak at the moment and in possibly the quickest loss for any prime minister in over 100 years, lawmakers here at Parliament have voted to take control away from Boris Johnson's government. By doing that, they've given themselves the power to stop the UK leaving the European Union without a deal. They've done this because they fear leaving without an agreement would wreck the UK economy, slash house prices and leave millions jobless. You can hear demonstrations here emotions are very much running high and take a look at this dramatic moment one of Johnson's own party members standing up during his speech and crossing the floor to join the opposition that now means he's lost his majority and has pushed out a further 21 members of his own party for voting with the opposition and all this matters because it makes an election and possibly a new prime minister much more likely this morning Michael Wow I mean what a move there for them to get up and cross the aisle James but what is Prime Minister Johnson what is he saying about all of this well, he was visibly furious, and he says threatening no deal is the only way to get a good deal from Brussels. But his critics will say he's lying, and that's no real effort is being made to talk to Europe. Three years from the Brexit referendum, and this country is no closer to leaving the European Union. Michael. All right, James, thank you so much. Robin. Okay, now to that stunning upset at the U.S. Open overnight. All-time great Roger Federer losing in the quarterfinals to an unseated player, while Serena Williams... Made it on to the next round with a swift win. TJ Holmes is here with oh, what, 44 minutes. Yeah, it was over faster than an episode of Power. Uh, both of these, <laughs> both of these matches were difficult to watch last night, but for different reasons. Uh, Serena just overpowered her yeah. opponent last night. 6-1, 6-0, 44 minutes. That's one of the shortest matches on tour this year. And she's playing the 18th ranked player in the world. Uh, this is a young lady who's the highest rate rated player in China. So no pushover. The young lady is talented. But Serena is on right Tiger. now. Tiger she looks good right now. So this was not a match. And the other was difficult to watch because Roger Federer was not himself. He was up two sets to one against a guy he's never lost to before. A guy who's ranked 78th in the world. But they tie this thing up two sets apiece and Federer has to leave the court for 10 minutes for a medical timeout. He gets treatment for 10 minutes and he came back and he was not himself. He has a neck and back injury. He said, hey, I was able to play, so don't blame the injury, but he was not himself. He was knocking balls all He's over the court, out of bounds, just uncharacteristic. Now, he is out of the U.S. Open. It opens things up for Roger or Rafa Nadal now. Would you believe Rafa Nadal, Roger Federer have never played at the U.S. Open? Really? They never, they never played, played each, each other. other. This lined up perfectly, and something always happens, and now Federer has been upset, and we're not going to get that match. But, uh, but last night was two different, two different matches, two different matches. Serena, she's looking she's, so yeah. good right now. Great. Number 24 looks good. That was her 100th victory at the U.S. Mm -hmm. Open ever, but tw number 24, major title, looks good right now. That's sure does. Thank you, TJ. You we're covering it. a lot of other stories this morning. I want to show you this new Coast Guard video coming in from that diving boat tragedy off the coast of California. We're going to have a first look inside as we hear exclusive from one of the victim's brothers. And a new twist in the college admissions scandal, the emails that are now raising questions. But first, let's go back to Ginger, who's there in Jupiter, Florida. Ginger? So here we are going to be done with the rain, but north of us, Palm Coast up to Hatteras, North Carolina, flash flood watches. So people who dealt with Matthew and, of course, Florence thinking about this because you could see more than a foot of rain in some of those areas that are covered in red. Let's get to the rainy cities now, brought to you by Walgreens. Fight for first dances. Fight for blast offs. Fight for piggyback rides. Fight for 7 a.m. makeouts. Every year, Walgreens helps millions of people fight the flu. Fight to protect the ones you love. Walgreens, be a flu fighter. Get your free flu shot today at your neighborhood Walgreens. 
Warm and muggy at the bus stop, but by recess time, we're already into the upper 80s. It's going to be a hot one today, so dress like summer. 94 to 95 with a storm threat coming after 4 o'clock and up until about 8 o'clock. One or two of those storms could bring some heavy rain, maybe even some high winds and hail. And then tomorrow, 70s for temperatures feeling a lot like early October. We'll pick up a little bit in the way of some rain from Dorian as it moves out to sea. That on Friday, the weekend looking nice. What day is it? It's Wednesday. Up day? Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you go get me. So, Kim, you going for a big drive safe and save discount? Yep. Using the app? I've been quite vigilant. Sharon says step on it. The meeting started. Okay, write her back. Dear Sharon, don't mess with my discount. Ah!